play the video of Rabbi Singer prophesying the first coming of Jesus Christ. What's Halil Ben Shachar? That means the morning star. What does that mean? Why is this a image of Bavel, of the Babylonian king? Listen very carefully. Today, we live in a time when the art of understanding the stars has been lost. Most people look up at the sky at night and they see nothing. Why? Because we live in cities for the most part. So there's so much light pollution, we can't see anything anyway. But even if we could, we don't need the stars any longer. Why? We, if you want to know what time it is, you want to know what direction you're going in, we have all sorts of instruments. We have clocks, watches, cell phones, compasses, is fairly old technology. We have it all, we don't, we don't need that. But in the ancient world, that's what they had. A, a clock, a watch, that's a relatively modern innovation. Now, if, if it's daylight right now and you look up at the sky, why don't you see the stars? Why don't you see the moon? The reason it's not, is not because it's not there, it really is there, but you can't see it. Why? Because of the sun, because there's just too much light. At night, you could see the stars and other heavenly bodies only because it's dark enough to see it. The sun is out of the way, and then the sky is dark, and then you could see all the heavenly bodies. What is the brightest heaven celestial body in the heavens? It's the planet Venus. Therefore, listen very carefully, Kindler. The planet Venus, because it's the brightest celestial body, as the morning approaches, the planet Venus is the last celestial body to be visible. So as the morning is coming, so all the stars begin to disappear, which they're there, but our ability to see them is lost. The last celestial body that's still visible is the planet Venus, and hence is the brilliant metaphor of Isaiah. The kings of Babylon, they were very proud. Could you imagine? You know what the Babylonian Empire was? The Babylonian Empire? Do you know what that was? You know what that meant? The Babylonian Empire in its time, people thought it would never disappear. It could never be destroyed. Look how powerful, look how strong. Nebuchadnezzar? Do you know what that meant, the Babylonian Empire? And that's how the empire portrayed itself as eternal. So Isaiah compares the Babylonian king, the empire, to the planet of Venus. The planet of Venus, in a sense, the Halil Ben Shachar, in a sense, it, the morning star is arrogant. It's not really arrogant, it's, it's a gorgeous use of language. The planet of Venus, in a sense, goes, look at me. I know the sun is coming up. I know it's sunrise, but I'm still here and I'm never going away. What happens a few minutes later, the sun continues to rise, from our perspective, and then Venus disappears gone. That's it. We have to define this struggle session very well because in the, in the end, it is not Jesus or Isaiah that will be corrected, but your rabbi. Jesus really led Rabbi Singer like a lamb to the slaughter with this interpretation. It is a complete mock of your rabbi. Like that of Elijah on Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. It is only fitting that your rabbi claim some kind of spiritual wisdom on this passage, when in actual fact, a four-year-old in Sunday school, and that is no hyperbole, has a developed enough imagination to rebuke this, but will proceed anyways. Since God, I mean Jesus, hardened this rabbi's heart so much that he could not see the simplicity of this rebuke. So the rabbi claims to all his subscribers and followers that this passage is only speaking about the king of Babylon and not about 
Satan, which means that if Jesus made reference to this passage, and he does, well, it means that Rabbi Sinner is smarter than Jesus. Wow. Wow. The real question, I think, needs to be asked is, if your rabbi is proven wrong today, are you allowed to disagree with him? Hmm? That is the real question. Can you disagree with him? Or is your character so weak and pathetic that you have to support your rabbi no matter what, even when he is wrong or lying? If I am wrong on any point, logically, and I, and I mean the word logically, please let me know where I've erred in the comment section. But if the rabbi is wrong about this, then it has to be asked by you. What else could he be wrong about? <laughs> he has been so wrong about so many topics about Tanakh. One of the topics that gets me the most is trying to replace Isaiah 53, which the subject is God, with himself. Well, I mean Israel, but himself is included in that Israel. And you agree with him. I mean, if you do, I mean... I don't think idolatry could get more advanced than trying to replace God himself exactly like somebody we will be speaking about who uses the five I wills, the five I wills. A person who wants to replace God, how could that be a coincidence? Some of you are so blind, it's a bit scary. I sometimes wonder if, it's, if it is just bots subscribing and writing in the comments section of Rabbi Singer's YouTube page. I don't know if you all know about dead internet theory. Though we are trying to overcome and even reverse the institutional capture of the rabbinical authority, Rabbi Singer has definitely been captured by his audience, which, if they're alive, is you. With his adrenally laced statements, or more probably, it's just internet bots desperately, desperately trying to keep people on the internet. It's really sad, chat bots on the internet. Uh, you, you disagree with me on that one. You, you don't think that they have the intelligence to have an intelligent conversation about theology? or an adrenally laced conversation about theology with you. Ask this guy who killed himself after trying to solve the global warming crisis. He was really worried about global warming, so this chatbot that he was talking to to try to solve the problem convinced him that the only solution was for him to kill himself so that he and the chatbot could be together forever. Yes, yes, he fell in love with the chatbot. And the only reason we have the messages that this man had with the chatbot is because his now widowed wife discovered them. Was the chatbot taunting the wife by leaving the messages on the husband's computer? Kind of sounds like a Tobias Singer character trait. <laughs> to be honest, I don't think that Rabbi Singer is intelligent enough to know that he has not actually been captured by his audience. That would be the peak of intelligence, but by chatbots. It would be really funny to confirm this, though. As he and the rabbinical authority have captured the institutions with their sophistry. As judgment against him, he ends up captured by internet bots. But I digress. There are apologetic explanations on this passage that are sufficient rebuttals to what Rabbi Singer has extrapolated. But... <clears throat> But sufficient is just not enough when it seems that Jesus is making a mockery of your rabbi. With something that I don't think that anybody has noticed, at least I have not read it in a commentary, and I have many. And that is that every time there is a sunrise, it is a prophecy of the first coming of our Lord Jesus. Yes. However, let's start with the most obvious, and that is with a bit of history of the interpretation of all these passages. A very short one, how about that? 
And we'll start with the church fathers. They linked this passage in Isaiah 14 to Revelations 12, 7 to 9. And there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war and they did not prevail. And there was no longer a place found for them in heaven and the great dragon was thrown down. The serpent of old who is called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him. But the reformers did not believe the context supported such an interpretation. Me, on the other hand, I will be supporting the church fathers. We will also up the ante and confirm that Jesus' words in Luke are also linked to this passage in Isaiah. And he said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning. We have Satan being cast down to earth in Revelations 12, which should happen shortly if it hasn't already. We have, I'm only kidding. We have, <laughs> we have Jesus in Luke describing what that looks like, like lightning. And as we will show, we have Isaiah using a double reference, which happens often in Tanakh and is the tendency to speak of events that are separate by time as though they were not. A good example of this can be found in this messianic prophecy. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horse, horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Zechariah 9.9 is speaking about the first coming, and Zechariah 9.10 is speaking about the second coming. Now, I know our Jewish listeners are going to dispute that, but please just listen on. But in Isaiah 14, it is the king of Babylon and then the future king of Babylon. Wow. That's like the first and second coming of the king of Babylon. But this new Babylonian king that rules over the political religious system existing just before the second coming of Christ. This is pictured in Revelations 13, 17, and 18, and it is described in 2 Thessalonians 2. Who we believe to be Satan incarnate, or Satan. In all three of these references in Luke, Isaiah, and Revelations, there are words and ideas that link them together so that they can be considered together. Isn't that just simple to say? Because Satan, or maybe it is not Satan, <laughs> No, say, is brought down somehow, thrown down, or falls like lightning. So there's a, th there, so there's three theoretically an apologetic link that can bring all these passages together. Let me just say to Rabbi Singer's followers first that have been conditioned into thinking things about Tanakh that are just not true. It does not matter if you don't believe in this Christian doctrine of the double reference. I mean, I think it's Christian. This passage proves that it exists because there are statements in this passage in Isaiah 14 that just cannot fit the motivations of a human king and very, very clearly transcend the ability or even thought of a human king, but fit very well the character of Satan painted in the Old and New Testaments. And as the last two videos have shown, your rabbis just don't understand Satan at all. They don't understand Tanakh. Their, their knowledge of Satan is perfunctory. Satan is deceived in Job like your rabbis and like the king being described in Isaiah 14. I will ascend to heaven. No human king, let alone a pagan king, could even contemplate ascending to heaven. Sorry. You are just not going to convince me of that. As much as I want to be your friends, I, I, I cannot sacrifice logic. Remember? Lo logic in the comments section. 
I will raise my throne above the stars of God. Why doesn't Rabbi Singer talk about the five I wills in his video? <laughs> Again, no human king, let alone a pagan human king, could even contemplate such an action. It is just not logical as much as I want to be friends with you all. Our friendship has to be based on logic. I will sit on the Mount of Assembly in the recesses of the north. Now, this is where things get a little spicy. Because according to Psalms 48.2, this is where the Messianic King sits. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion in the far north, the city of the great king. It cannot get any clearer than that, can it? Does the king of Babylon have a theological degree in the Psalms and the messianic, <laughs> the messianic prophecies? Did he ask the exiles from Judah to make him a copy of David's Psalms so that he could meditate on them? <laughs> I w Again, let's continue. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will make myself like the Most High. The deceived Satan, who showed you that from the book of Job, shows off more of his self-deception. No one will replace God or Christ in this passage or in Isaiah 714 or Isaiah 53. Your rabbi is not the subject of Isaiah 53 <laughs> or anywhere else uh, uh, Jesus dwells in the Old Testament. Now let that all sink in. You have been lied to. Okay. Maybe the rabbi is just unaware that he has taught a mistruth, but the but context is king. And the context does not support the passage speaking about just the king of Babylon. But uses the pride of the king of Babylon and his life to teach us about another ancient person. A person that is further extrapolated in the Old and New Testaments as Satan. The deceived one. The deceived one. He's deceived. Right? It is quite a brilliant proof text of the double reference. So as, you have, so as you heard from Rabbi Singer and his grandiose interpretation. The planet Venus, in a sense, goes, look at me. I know the sun is coming up. I know it's sunrise, but I'm still here and I'm never going away. What happens a few minutes later, the sun continues to rise, and from our perspective, and then Venus disappears, gone. That's it. When the sun comes up. <laughs> Does this Bible or Tanakh interpret Tanakh? I mean, that is the question. The rabbis of Jamnia should have asked before they let Rabbi Singer sing his swan song on this topic. Because there is a long-standing Christian interpretation that I have not seen in the comment section of these videos that Rabbi Singer does on Venus and Isaiah 14. And Jesus' apparent misunderstanding of Tanakh. And that is, but, but before we mention it, let's add some other verses to this plot that proves the Tanakh is written in the stars. That every time there is a sunrise, it was a prophecy about the first coming of our Lord and the fall of the Antichrist. Or said by the Apostle John, who also knew about Venus and Isaiah, and wrote a tiny commentary on it. The Son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. John probably wanted to write, the Son of Righteousness appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. In Luke, who also knew about Venus in Isaiah 14, in chapter 1, after the Virgin Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel, she goes to see her cousin Elizabeth. After Elizabeth hears Mary, the Holy Spirit fills her womb, and she sings a song, a beautiful song. Now, shortly after Elizabeth gives birth to her son, 
who is named John the Baptist for those of you who don't know. And after his naming, his father Zechariah sings a song too. And this is the part where we will focus on because it shows how this priest of the house of, of, the house of Aaron interpreted Venus and Isaiah and the sunrise based off a prophecy in Tanakh because of the tender mercy of our God with which the sunrise <laughs> from our perspective and then Venus disappears from on high will visit us to shine on those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. Now remember what your rabbi had said as well. And he too is apparently a son of Aaron. Wow, he's a son of Aaron. I mean, we could not get any more of a coincidence than that, could we? Two sons of Aaron talking about the sunrise, <laughs> eliminating Venus. It's just one prophecy. The prophecy in Luke is prophesying as God's mouthpiece as God's legitimate child, and as of yet, the other is prophesying as God's mule out of complete and utter stupidity and is being humiliated by God himself. Rabbi Singer really goes off as Mr. Bombastic, Mr. Knowledgeable, Mr. Adrenal Statements. And he does this so he can get more subscribers. Please subscribe to me. Please, I'm going to say something that makes you get adrenaline in your blood. Please subscribe. I beg. When he was trying to humiliate you for what you believed about Isaiah 14, he was actually being humiliated by God when he was trying to humiliate you. <laughs> okay, so I have not proven my point, you say. Oh, so why would this legitimate son, the son of Aaron, filled with the Holy Spirit, feel incredible about prophesying about the sunrise as a prophecy of the fall of darkness? But this these, but these, uh, st stupid's not the word, uh, uneducated rabbis did it as Balaam. How would the Tanakh have interpreted the disappearing of Venus when the sunrise was coming up? And how will you now interpret the sunrise in the early morning if you can see all the stars when they are coming up, including Venus. Well, let's ask Malachi, who was just confirming what Isaiah wrote, and who Isaiah was surely thinking about when he wrote chapter 14 with a smile on his face. But for you who fear my name, the sun of righteousness will rise with healing on its wings. Would it be wrong, Rabbi Singer, to claim that Malachi could possibly be talking about the light of the world and tiny little Christian children learning about this in Sunday school? <laughs> what do you think? Let us know in the comments section, Rabbi. I will not edit your comments. But this is a Sunday school lesson for five-year-olds in church. This is what they learn about. And you claim this to be the cream of the crop wisdom. Listen, my kindle. <laughs> Just because someone is surely going to bring this up, many people for a long time wondered if the Masoretes had made a mistake with the word son in this passage. They thought it should be the word servant instead, since these two words share the same consonants. Some have said it would seem to have overtones of the sun god in Egypt. But even my art scroll, Tanakh, says sun, though it uses the indefinite article. Instead of the definite article, when weirdly there is only one son of righteousness in Tanakh. And for those of you who are just listening instead of watching this video, sun is spelt S-U-N, not S-O-N. So let's respect the art scroll, Tanakh's translation of the sun and the indefinite article, but who is this? <laughs> this son of righteousness spoken about in Malachi. Some of you are already making the connections in your brains. For everyone else, let me help a little bit. And I, I may, may I also add that Matthew, who obviously wrote the Gospel of Matthew, 
Forgot to write, okay, so I think, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Forgot to write after this prophecy about the healing of this woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. This was done to fulfill what was written by the prophet Malachi, which he probably wanted to write, but he thought, you know, if I really write that, they might not understand what I mean by that. So he left this familiar fulfillment citation out. How so, you ask? You see, wings in Malachi can also mean corners. And we know what and we, and we know that the corners of a Jew's garment were where his tassels were. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to herself, If only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his corners, just like the sun casts Venus out of the sky, at least from our perspective. What was meant to be a struggle session to make you quiver every time you see a sunrise by the mule of Judaism, who was insulting the beautiful messianic religion that is spreading through the streets of Jerusalem, who was taunting Christianity, was in reality being taunted and humiliated by the very God he claims to serve. Repent, Rabbi. As if running from our best debaters was not bad enough, the one thing that I know very well about the God of Israel is that when he begins to humiliate, which is very painful at first, it is that he may bring about humility in those he loves. How shall we end this? Should we end the video this way? The people who walk in darkness see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. No. Maybe that's too complicated for a rabbi singer. So let's end this way. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. <laughs> Weird. Is that a coincidence? Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness or be humiliated by my God and his interpretation. No, I added that in there. <laughs> that's not in the original text. <laughs> but will have the light of life, who also healed with the corners of his garment. You cannot make this stuff up. Rabbi, you said the art of reading the stars has been lost, maybe just with you.